Welcome once again to the official MUFON podcast. I'm Richard Beckwith. Tonight, the DOD issues its new UAP report. The Department of Naval Intelligence denies the Black Vault's request for all videos designated unidentified aerial phenomena. And MUFON is working with the government. All that, plus new cases of interest from the files of the National UFO Reporting Center and MUFON. That's coming up right now on the official MUFON podcast. The DOD released its long-anticipated UAP report last month, and surprise, surprise, we still don't know what they are. This from the debrief. According to the new assessment, 247 new reports, as well as 119 that were either since discovered or reported after the preliminary assessment's time period, have been accumulated since the publication of the last report on UAP issued by the ODNI in June of 2021, spanning a 17-year period. According to ODNI, most of the new reporting originates from U.S. Navy and U.S. Air Force aviators and operators who witnessed UAP during the course of their operational duties. The observed increase in the UAP reporting rate was partially due to a better understanding of the possible threats that UAP may represent, either as safety of flight hazards or as potential adversary collection platforms, and partially due to reduced stigma surrounding UAP reporting. This increased reporting allows more opportunities to apply rigorous analysis and resolve events. According to the report, more than half of the observed UAP appear to exhibit unremarkable characteristics, with half a dozen attributable to aerial clutter, 26 believed to represent unmanned aerial systems, UAS-like entities, and 163 determined as being representative of balloon or balloon-like entities. New to the DOD's assessment of concerns related to UFOs is potential health implications related to the UFO UAP phenomenon. Although the report noted that there are no encounters with UAP confirmed to contribute directly to adverse health-related effects to the observers, of course, this ignores encounters like those of Jim Penniston and John Burroughs, who both suffered negative health effects after their encounter in Rendlesham Forest in December of 1980. Acknowledging that health-related effects may appear at any time after an event occurs, Arrow will track any reported health implications related to UAP should they emerge. A classified version of that report was delivered to Congress. President Biden recently signed the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2023. Included within the annual defense bill are provisions aimed at improving government transparency on the UAP issue by providing protections for whistleblowers, in addition to expanding the scope of current investigations by the DOD's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO. You'll find a link to the DOD UAP report in the description below. The Department of the Navy recently denied FOIA requests from John Greenwald's Black Vault for all videos designated unidentified aerial phenomena like the FLIR-1, Gimbal, and GoFast videos previously released and labeled as UAP. According to the author of the response letter, Gary Kaysen, Deputy Director, ODNI FOIA PA Program Office, the requested videos contain sensitive information pertaining to unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, and are classified and therefore exempt from disclosure in their entirety under Exemption 5 U.S.C. Section 552b1 in accordance with Executive Order 13526 and the UAP Security Classification Guide. The release of this information will harm national security as it may provide adversaries valuable information regarding Department of Defense, Navy operations, vulnerabilities, and or capabilities. No portions of the videos can be segregated for release. Here is John Greenwald from Inside the Black Vault commenting on the reasons given by the DOD for the denial. A lot of people, or at least a strong number of them, read that and just automatically said, aha, we're dealing with our own tech. This is black tech, our own capabilities. You guys know me where I nitpick every word and I laugh because you have to. You have to do it in every case. It doesn't matter if it goes to support your theory or if it goes to crush your theory. You have to nitpick. And in this case... I do not agree 
with the automatic dismissal that this is now black tech, even though I get a lot of heat for bringing up the fact that that's part of the conversation and that it's possible that some of these cases absolutely are our black budget programs, technology that we don't know about yet, that even maybe certain people high ranking in the military don't even know yet and are encountering them on training ranges. I think all that's a possibility. But I can't just look at this and go, I told you guys, because I don't think that it just fully supports my uh, approach here. And by breaking down this sentence and nitpicking, I believe it is incredibly broad, even though some people think, well, it's clear as day, John, they're telling you it's their own capabilities. No. Why? Because you break it down word by word. The release of this information will harm national security as it may not will, but may. So legal jargon is like, eh, maybe, maybe not. That's the way to look at it from a non-legal jargon way. I mean, that's truly what legal verbiage does is that it just leaves it all wide open that it maybe could. So we have to do the blanket denial. So it may provide adversaries, adversaries valuable information regarding Department of Defense Navy operations, vulnerabilities, and or meaning not all of the above, not some, but maybe one, if not two, if not three of the three capabilities. Now, why am I making such a big deal out of that? Well, you have to nitpick that and realize that the true root cause of these UAP cases, and pick your explanation of choice, a balloon, a seagull, uh, I've posted on Twitter, and this is actually true, a turtle uh, can be what's called a range fowler, and then by definition, they're including range fowler reports in UAP cases. So, hey, maybe even a turtle uh, underwater. Who knows? Uh, but uh, joking aside, pick your explanation all the way to aliens. Right. And you have a wide range of causes for potential UAP. The Black Vault has appealed this decision. You will find a link to this story at The Black Vault and The Black Vault's YouTube video channel in the description below. Astrophysicist David Kipping in a lecture at Columbia University recently argued that we might be alone in the universe. Arguing for a universe in which we are probably alone and relying on the fact that we possess no clear proof of alien life, he argues that we should remain skeptical until we are presented with clear and convincing evidence. So you can also said that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. And that's also a very good point. The fact that we don't, haven't received any radio signals, the fact that we don't see um, stars which have been transformed into engines in the sky, the fact that we don't apparently see galactic civilizations, none of that proves that there aren't, there aren't out there. We can always think of ways that maybe they're just xenophobic, maybe they're shy, maybe we're all in a zoo. So you can't, it doesn't disprove it either, okay? However, I would say that everything we know about the galaxy so far is consistent with us being alone. That is consistent. Now, I would just say my real conclusion, the real point of this whole talk is to be agnostic on this, okay? You do not have, if someone asks you, do you believe there is life in the universe? You don't have to say yes or no. You can say, I don't know. And those three scientists at the beginning should have said that, in my opinion. If we don't have data to support a position, we shouldn't be saying, well, I, you know, the answer is this. Because as a, as a scientist or as a person or a scholar, we are expected to justify our answers based on evidence. That's kind of the whole point of science. It's evidence-based reasoning. There's no evidence in this case. You'll find a link to Dr. Kipping's speech in the description below. Harvard astronomer Avi Leb says we shouldn't rely on the government to provide us with UFO information. According to Leb, defense officials and scientists view the subject of UFOs from different perspectives, and we should not be persuaded by our predisposed notions about the nature of the phenomenon. Here's Avi Leb on TMZ. Well, the fact that they talk about it publicly means that uh, they have no clue as to at least a third of the objects that they are seeing. Now, the government is not a scientific organization. Uh, the intelligence agencies are mostly concerned about the national security, the safety of military personnel. So they want to figure out, are these spy 
drones, for example, that were sent by China, or are they something else? Uh, from a scientific perspective, you know, it could be a mixed bag. It could be human-made objects. It could be natural objects. But even if one is of extraterrestrial technological origin, that would be the most significant discovery of humanity. Yeah, I think the government is not a scientific organization and the data that it collects um, will remain uh, outside of public view because it was collected by classified sensors. But the sky is not classified. It makes no sense to force the government to declassify information that was collected by classified sensors. We don't want to harm the national security interests of the United States. Instead, we can just collect our own data with instruments that are perfectly under our control that we fully understand and share the information with all humans, irrespective of their nationality, because anything from outside Earth is of interest to all humans. Uh, it has nothing to do with national borders. And of course, we as scientists or astronomers uh, do not care much about drones that are made in China. Uh, so we leave that to the government. We want to deal with everything else. You'll find a link to the TMZ story and the full TMZ YouTube video in the description below. The MUFON Board of Directors traveled to Washington, D.C. last month to meet with members of Congress regarding the UFO UAP issue and to offer our assistance in helping Congress solve the UFO UAP mystery. Over the last year, MUFON and its representatives have met with over 150 members of the House and Senate. We have briefed the House and Senate Intelligence Committees and formally taken steps to become the civilian component of the new UAP Task Force and Arrow. While the board was in Washington, I had an opportunity to ask Congressman Andre Carson why he felt it was important to study the UFO UAP phenomenon. Well, I think it's critically important, uh, especially for those of us who are in Congress who are stewards or trustees over taxpayer dollars. I think the people deserve to have answers uh, while protecting our national security, obviously. But I think it's time. I think people are ready, and I think our government has to be prepared to deliver the answers that are satisfactory to the American people and the global community, quite frankly. Our thanks to Congressman Carson and the other brave legislators in Congress who are stepping up to the plate to address the serious nature of the UFO issue. Now, here are some of the latest cases from the National UFO Reporting Center and MUFON. In National UFO Reporting Center case number S173388, the witness reports that he was the captain of a flight from LAX to JFK on December 8, 2022. Upon returning to the flight deck from a bathroom break, he was told by the first officer to quickly look outside and see what he was seeing. There was a large white orb with a second one above it and slightly to the right in the night sky. The orb stayed for quite a bit and then suddenly vanished. The first officer and the flight attendant who was in the cockpit while the witness was out of the cabin said that there had been an even brighter orb, which looked like an oncoming aircraft just a few moments before. They had looked at the TCAS and found nothing on the display. The night sky was quite bright due to a full moon in the western sky, which was lighting the entire eastern view of the sky. There was a low, overcast layer which kept the ground light from shining through. A few moments later, they noticed the orbs again and were shocked by how bright they were. They had heard earlier that day that Mars would be the second brightest object in the sky after the moon due to its proximity to the Earth. The orbs that were observed by this flight crew were larger and much brighter than Mars, which they had seen in the western sky during their departure out of LAX. The captain radioed ATC to have an adjacent UPS flight come up on a separate frequency. They asked them if they were seeing anything in the eastern sky when the orbs showed up again. They said that they also saw them. Cleveland ATC got involved in the discussion and asked the witness to report everything they were seeing. Their location was just east of Chicago airspace near Indiana-Michigan border. ATC then queried other planes, including an Alaska Airlines flight. Other planes, including a private jet, also reported seeing the orbs. The crew saw the orbs come back into their view seven or eight times over the period of around 25 minutes. In MUFON case number 128604, witnesses reported that at around 6.30 p.m. on Friday, February 10th, in Wilcox, Pennsylvania, 
they witnessed strange lights. The witnesses watched the lights in the eastern sky for approximately a half an hour and were able to record them behaving strangely for several minutes. This case has been assigned to Fred Lane, our state section director in Pennsylvania. In MUFON case number 128415, the witness reported that on January 23, 2023, at approximately 9.49 p.m. Eastern, he noticed several lights moving over his truck through his front windshield. He was talking to his friend on the phone, so he hung up quickly and started recording. The lights moved relatively slowly and towards the north while gaining altitude. The objects clearly move in an odd but coordinated manner. He recorded the objects until they moved out of sight, obstructed by the trees. This case has been assigned to Matthew Kellison, one of our trained field investigators in Florida. Thank you to our excellent field investigators. I'll be back in just a few moments with some afterthoughts. You are not alone. Thousands of people all over the world have sightings of UFOs per month. MUFON is the place to report them. Since 1969, MUFON has been investigating UFO reports and providing this information to the public. Our aim is the scientific study of UFOs for the benefit of humanity. Support UFO research. Join MUFON today. Is it just me, or are the skies suddenly filled with UFOs or UAPs or whatever you want to call them? As the Chinese spy balloon incident sparked an international irrational UFO frenzy? Are there more objects flying around than ever before, or have we simply become acutely aware of strange things in the sky? Many people are asking whether any of the objects recently downed by our military are extraterrestrial in origin. As much as I would like to believe that we have the capability of downing an alien spacecraft, I highly doubt an advanced civilization would be so vulnerable to our defenses. That said, there are a lot of conflicting reports about what the objects look like and how they behaved. Considering the high flow of low information from the Pentagon, we may never know the true nature of the downed objects. Considering the conventional behavior of the objects, it is unreasonable to jump to an extraterrestrial explanation. It has been more than five years since the release of the Tic Tac and Go Fast videos, and UFOs have weaseled their way into the mainstream of American politics, sporting a new acronym and a freshly scrubbed public image. UAPs are being marketed as a new development, something that just started happening. We here at MUFON know that just isn't true. Why is this happening? Why is there so much talk about this right now? Could it be because humanity has found itself on a precipice? Will we destroy ourselves, or will we see ourselves through to the spacefaring future we deserve? We stand at the shore of a vast new ocean, ready to sail into the unknown. We are within decades of returning to the moon, exploring Mars, and mining asteroids. We recently reached a threshold with fusion energy allowing us to produce more energy from a fusion reaction than is required to initiate it. Abundant, free, clean energy. This brings us one step closer to becoming a true Type 1 civilization. Coincidentally, the recent DART mission proved more successful than expected in adjusting the trajectory of the asteroid Dimorphos, suggesting that a deadly space rock could be deflected by a similar technology in the future. It is difficult to understate the significance of this achievement, as it could potentially help us to avert a planet-killing event. At the same time, with all of these wonderful things happening, with the future looking so bright, there is a plethora of psychopaths threatening to end the world with nuclear weapons. There is also the looming possibility that we might become the victims of a devastating solar event that completely wipes out our electrical grid or destroys our atmosphere. Now, in the midst of all this, eluding our most sophisticated defense and surveillance technologies, operating in the periphery of our perception, is the greatest true mystery of our age, the mystery of UFOs. There is only one organization in the world that has been consistently collecting real data on the phenomenon for more than 50 years, the Mutual UFO Network. Our membership is diverse and spans the globe. 
Many of us have different ideas about what the phenomenon is or what it represents. Some of our members are true believers. Some are more skeptical. What is important is that we continue to collect the data. MUFON is a scientific organization dedicated to the study of UFOs for the benefit of humanity. That is why we decided to work with the government, not the men in black, but the legislature. The DOD operating under the executive branch doesn't share UFO information with Congress. MUFON will, because it is important for our legislators, the people who represent us, to have all of the information they need to make the decisions that benefit all of us, not just a select few. That is how it has to be in a land governed by the people, for the people. Thank you for joining us. And for those of you watching on YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time, right here on the official MUFON podcast.